the amazing lineup of speakers at this year's Biomechanics Summer School. Okay, Professor Peter. Yes. It's been an interesting couple of days listening to you here at the Biomechanics Summer School, but you've not been talking about biomechanics as such. You've been talking much more about diet and, well, diabetes really, and yeah. the obesity epidemic. So we've had a, a room full of podiatrists here, and I'd like you to tell us what sort of message you'd like us to take away in terms of how we can help our patients in clinic on a day-to-day -day basis taking on board your messages. Yeah, well, I think, uh, I mean, you, you might rightly say, well, what, uh, you know, what does a podiatrist need to know about nutrition and so on? And, and, you know, I'm not certainly not advocating that you give nutrition advice, but I think it's really important to, uh, for you know, people who are uh, treating patients who with uh, disease like, uh, like diabetes, that they're aware that there are... Uh, you know, I guess changes in the way we're approaching uh, dietary management of, uh, of things like obesity and diabetes. I mean, traditionally, it's always been this sort of obsession with fat, and so we've recommended low-fat, high-carbohydrate uh, diets. And really, when you think about it, that's the craziest uh, diet of all for a uh, for a diabetic. I mean, what is diabetes? Diabetes is a disease of carbohydrate intolerance, and yet we've been recommending a, a low-fat, high-carbohydrate diet to diabetics. It just does not make any sense at all. I mean, no wonder we've got this epidemic of diabetes that, that we have. So, you know, I think uh, there's a lot of evidence now that are coming out that a low-carb diet is very helpful for uh, for diabetes. And um, so I think, you know, it, it, in your discussion with your patients, uh, it's uh, it's something that you can alert them to. Uh, as I said, I'm not expecting a podiatrist to be giving, you know, detailed dietary advice, but maybe, you know, uh, pointing them in the right direction. There are some excellent uh, resources. There are lots of good books around. There are some great websites. Um, there's a website called dietdoctor.com, D-I-E-T-D-O-C-T-O-R.com, which is a, a, a Swedish uh, doctor started this website. It's now the biggest low carb uh, website in the world. Got fantastic YouTube videos, lots of information about uh, how you can reduce the amount of carbs and, and get a healthier diet and, and, and shows you the evidence how you can reverse diabetes. I mean, you know, we always think of type 2 diabetes as a being a chronic irreversible condition and now there's evidence coming out now that you can actually put it into remission and reverse it, which is very exciting from a, from a treatment point of view. So dietdoctor.com, from a practical point of view, particularly uh, of uh, parents of children, um, ditch the carbs com, which is a New Zealand website set up by a, a mum who was frustrated that there was no information out there. She said, "This great website, so things for school lunches and uh, you know, you know, helping your kids reduce the amount of sugar and carbs in their diet." And then for diabetics, the uh, the diabetes.co.uk website is excellent. Um, has some very good. Uh, uh, that's distinct from the diabetes.org website, which is not so good. But the diabetes.co.uk is an outstanding website for. Uh, for people with diabetes to get information about dietary management of their disease. Okay, so basically our role is more to signpost these people to all those excellent resources that you're suggesting and to have those conversations yeah. because of the time that we're spending with them. Uh, you, you're in a great uh, opportunity to, to have influence over your patients because you spend time with them. I mean, a doctor, you know, you come in and see the doctor, you've got seven minutes or eight minutes and, you know, by the time they write a script and, you know, take your blood pressure and you're gone. And so, whereas, you know, I think allied health professionals, whether they be physiotherapists or massage therapists or podiatrists, have uh, much more time with their patients, they have much better relationships with their patients in many cases. And, uh, and, and they're topics that are discussed. And so I think you can really guide, gently guide them in the, in the right direction. And, uh, you know, we're all about helping our patients and uh, if you can do that, you know, it's, uh, it's part of the management, I think. And you've been talking today about inflammation, so tell us a little bit about the story of your uh, tendinopathy and how your diet affected that. Well, it was interesting, yeah, I changed uh, to a low-carb diet some years ago and I'd had chronic Achilles tendinopathy all my, uh, all my adult life, so the point where I wasn't really running and, uh, and I'd, you know, in the morning my first sort of uh, step out of bed in the morning would always be a painful one because you have that uh, and you have a tender, tender, uh, thickened Achilles tendon and, and I didn't even think about it and a couple of months into this diet, I suddenly realised that you know I wasn't feeling my Achilles anymore, and I had no further problems with it, no tenderness, completely resolved all my all my symptoms. So uh, there's you know some really interesting research going on now into uh, the role of, of, uh, of diet in tendinopathy and uh, osteoarthritis, for instance. Um, you know we always used to think that uh, there was a link between obesity and, and osteoarthritis because of load. So you know you know the fatter you are, the more load there is on your knee and so on, which is a factor. But we also 
also know now that uh, that fat cells actually secrete inflammatory cytokines and are inflammatory themselves. So uh, reducing um, your fat cell uh, and, and also reducing inflammatory foods in your diet can have a big impact on, on osteoarthritis. So I now, for all my patients with osteoarthritis, on an anti-inflammatory type uh, you know, diet with a reduced sugar, reduced processed food and a real food sort of diet. And what sort of uh, results are you finding after doing that? Well, clinically very good results. I mean, I've had some dramatic results in athletes who have managed to get off medications, uh, you know, chronic uh, inflammatory problems that have resolved over a period of, of weeks. So uh, it's certainly worth as an adjunct to whatever treatment you're doing and uh, so it's something to look at in the future. So, something we need to be thinking about, folks. Thanks so much for talking to me and sharing that. Okay, Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.